mate. If you ain't getting this one, girl, then this one's for you. What is going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode on EME TV. And as you can see behind me, I've got the FN2 again. And today we're going to be going through sort of running costs and how I fared living with the FN2. I've done almost 15,000 miles in this, funny enough, in about almost two years. So I'll be giving you sort of a review, not really a review, but my thoughts. Um, a lot of people have been messaging me and asking me how this car sort of has fared. What do I think of it in this sort of price bracket? Do, you, do I advise any other cars or will I say the FN2 is the best? I'm going to be running through all of that in today's video and as well the problems. I believe the problem video has already come out now at this point in time. It's already on the channel but I'm going to go through the problems that I've actually encountered on the car things that I'm going to be fixing as well but yeah as the train goes past again I think this happened in the previous video that I did as well but without further ado guys let's get going let's get in the FN2 go for a little drive and talk all things FN2 all right so let's get going so and today it's actually quite a nice day we've got I think 18 degrees here in Manchester which isn't too bad and I'm about to go without even starting the car but yeah all right let's go lovely sound of a four cylinder naturally aspirated and let's go turn that off hopefully the camera doesn't shake too much the only thing from going from the Mark V to this car is that yeah the ride quality again <laughs> but that's something I'll be addressing in sort of future videos the things stuff that I've already encountered on changing or trying to better um, from my vice and from forums and from looking at other stuff but yeah the FN2 in general how is it fair I've got 15,000 miles what do I think um, and am I enjoying it am I still excited about the car moving forward after having it for two years all of the above yes this car has been absolutely brilliant i've obviously raved up on the on the reliability stuff for for a while now in terms of obviously if you're looking for a car that is fun cheap to run well cheap to run is relative but cheap to run um reliable as well something that you can just have fun in and, and it isn't too expensive you know if you don't want to be paying big odds you know over 10 20 thousand pounds under five five grand you can, you can get yourself a very decent fa2 and at the moment they're even kind of going down in price and the market on these is very strange because the good examples go for well try to go anyway as somebody this glc tries to take me out um the decent <laughs> the decent um the fn2s with deep in still in decent they can which have been well looked after i've seen go for in excess of sort of seven eight sometimes even nine k and i thought those that in that price bracket you're looking at sort of championship white and, and maybe mugen stuff or maybe ropey mugens as well but yeah at the moment the the good examples are sort of kind of i wouldn't say appreciating i feel like some some on the market are probably asking a grand or two over what anybody would be would be probably willing to pay because the discrepancy between ropey examples and good examples is major so as i've seen you know questionable ones go on facebook marketplace for nine and, a, nine and a half for one and a half but then i've seen really good ones that people have looked after maybe in and around the 60 70k um, mileage mark for we're talking i've seen some for 8k and i'm like 8k for an fn2 bear in mind i bought mine for 1900 with 19 oh, with 19 95k on the clock and it served me well and now we've done just shy of 110,000 miles so yeah I mean in my eyes it, I, it's not it's you can't say it's not worth it because at the end of the day if something's well looked after it's well looked after and um, it's peace of mind doesn't mean that um the low mileage ones are not gonna nothing's gonna go wrong something can still go wrong and, and the fact that um St you've got some FN2s on the market which are in and around the sort of 170,000, 180,000 because of the reliability of the engine. Some people say even when you are buying sort of these K20 engines, whether it be Z4 or A2, it doesn't mileage doesn't really matter. It just you know if you look after the car, the car looks after you. And I've said this on this channel various number of times. Now on the fuel front, the fuel front. At one point I was averaging like 24 miles per gallon, which was absolute chaos. I think I raved about it on the channel as well. Um, but now I think I'm in and around sort of 30, 30 miles to the gallon. If I check now, yeah, 28, 28 miles per gallon. But that 
is based on the last 5,668 miles that I've done since the last service. So I thought I'd measure that as well. So that's not too bad to be fair. 28, and that's a mix of in, in sort of in town driving and motorway miles. So that's not too bad. So when I used to reset the clocks when I'm doing motorway miles, um, or yeah, reset the mileage clocks, um, that used to be in and around sort of 32 plus. So I used to get more than 30 on the motorway, which was which was always ideal and good. Um, but yeah, in town, sometimes I used to average like 24, which it should, shouldn't be the case. I mean, that's probably due to one, my driving, and two, probably just getting brake calibers checked. I do have a little bit of an issue on the front, on the driver's side front, I think brake, is it called brake shim? Or brake pad shims? Because I think it's making a little noise. It's like shaking, I might have to change that, but I am looking to upgrade my brakes on this anyway and um, get some sort of drilled and grooved brakes all around discs and some decent pads as well um, and looking at companies out there at the moment that are doing them and just reading about their reviews but that's something that i will be doing later on the line as well yeah the fa2 has been absolutely great i can't fault this car and it's got to be very hard to part ways with it now i was explained in the first video that i've posted i believe it's on the channel now that um, I've been off YouTube because I was sort of moving house and at the time obviously parted, I've obviously parted ways with my Mark 5 which I've explained in the previous video and I also almost parted ways with this. Now I actually made a video during that time explaining um, how I was selling this and I actually put the advert up on Facebook Marketplace. Some of you may have seen the advert, some of you may have not seen the advert but I did have this up on Facebook Marketplace. Now people did message me, people were eager to buy it um, but in the end I just it was just too much of a I don't know I just couldn't even though I said in my head you know what just reset just get rid of everything and sort of reset this car I just couldn't get rid of and it, it's just because I've gelled with it so much it just does everything it never lets me down it's a bit fun to drive I could drop I'm in fifth I drop it to third now like I'm not gonna get that I'm not gonna get that from any other car I'm really not so that's why I found it so hard to, to actually sell it and try and move on and probably keep the concept fresh. So I've actually made it a point or made it a case that moving forward, I'm going to do more content on the FN2. And I'm, FN2 is going to be the base point of this channel moving forward. I'm going to, essentially I bought the car as a daily, obviously, but I haven't yet done, you know, it is a project because I bought it from Copart as a cat end. Um, and I think it's been categorized twice, if I'm not mistaken. But it's been, it's been faultless, like, he's been faultless. And when I found out it had been categorised twice before buying it, you know, I was sceptical on buying it. I was like, you know what, I just hope that this doesn't cause me any more pain or any, any grief or, you know, just in terms of financially, like, just don't be a pain. I like, don't have, make me chuck loads of money onto it, but I haven't. It's been completely fine. I've serviced it. The only thing I've done is I've serviced it. I've put new spark plugs. Um, what else have I done? That's about it. I think one of the, one of the... What is it? One of the springs I had to change, or something like that, on an MOT, and that's about it. So one of the shockers, sorry, and that's and that's it. That is it. So you know, I just you know you. It's just that thing where I just I'm struggling to get rid of the FN2, and that's why I've made it. A, I'm making a conscious effort to do everything to this car to make it one of the best examples in the UK. So if you're out there, and I've banged on about this 10, 15, 20 times, but all for, all of course for new viewers as well, because my subscribers have been going up, and thanks a lot for all the support you guys have been giving me over the last like two years that I've been doing YouTube very inconsistently, but still, I've got to appreciate the support that I've got from you guys, and, and thanks a lot for that. And if you guys are interested in FN2 content moving forward, or any car content, because I'm gonna be putting up some cheap car content as well. I've got a wheel in the back for an A3 that I've got, which a video on that will be coming to the channel soon. Um, but yeah, please don't hesitate to subscribe, like the video and you know, and do all that good stuff, thanks a lot. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, yeah, the FN2 is just, just great. And if anybody out there is looking to buy a car for in and around 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, underneath that 5,000 bracket, get yourself an FN2. Well, probably a non-categorized one to keep the peace of mind, but get yourself an FN2. And if you do end up getting an FN2, share with me how you've actually found it. 
because trust me, it's going to be, it's got a, it's a game changer. So FN2 is a game changer. So loads of people don't like it, granted. Um, I have both the EP3 and FN2. FN2 got a lot of stick when it came out um, after the EP3 because that was such an iconic car and that's obviously a classic, sort of a classic now. They're really appreciating in, up, well, appreciating in value. Whereas the FN2 was seen to not really be much of an upgrade. A lot of people don't like the shape um, and you know the looks and style of the car, which I, I, I think is all right. I like the digital display that you get as well because in 2000 this came out in sort of 56 2007 2000, end of 2006 and for it to have this sort of sort of dash was quite unique at the time so i think it was sort of ahead of its age um I've, i think i've you know banged on about my views between the eb3 and fn2 in, in, in a video i've even got a video comparison them um or well, doing a comparison between them but yeah the, the FN2 gets stick, but for me, you, all you hear on my channel is how good this car really, really is. So yeah. <laughs> also, the only thing to realise is even though the miles per gallon is, is quite good, you can have a, have a sort of 30 miles per gallon in the FN2. If you are going to hit VTEC multiple times, um, like I've like I experienced quite a bit, the MPG will drastically go down, and that really is what eats the fuel and eats the oil. That's why you have to obviously do regular oil changes check your oil regularly in these every sort of three thousand four thousand miles is what i do um always i always have a liter in the back in my boot as well just in case it gets low at any point if i'm doing long journeys especially um and i've done a little modification um with the um uh, the air induction well the induction cone or air filter that we put on the stock air box took the stock air box off what put it on the end of sort of the the line going to the stock air box and to be fair it sounds better um, in terms of power, I mean, it feels the, it feels the same. It probably, if you if I downloaded it beforehand and after, it would probably be slightly faster. But yeah, I never really know. But yeah, we're up for a review, guys. I'm gonna end the video here. Conclusion is the FN2 has been great. I'm loving it. It's gonna be the focal point of the channel moving forward. And um, if you guys are in the market for a low budget under 5k hot hatch, my my view or my answer to you guys will always be the same. Go and grab yourself an FN2. But as always guys, thanks a lot for the support. Um, if you are here and enjoying the content, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, and I guess I will see you guys on the next one as well. Peace. Mate, if you ain't getting this one, then this one's for you.